Hello, my name is Brooke Ward. I'm the President and CEO of the Washington Health System. It's my honor to be back with you as part of our ongoing Friday video series where we attempt to give you an update about what's going on in our healthcare world. And I want to start today talking about vaccine and vaccine clinics. As you know, in the past, we required having an appointment to go to one of our three sites to do that in an orderly and very efficient manner. And if you want to schedule an appointment with us to get a COVID Pfizer vaccine, you still can by going through our website. But at this point, that's no longer required. All three of our sites are accepting walk-ins at any time, as long as they're open. Now, keep in mind, not every clinic's open every day. So to look at those dates and times of operations, please remember to go to our website, whs.org backslash vaccine to check times and availability. Now we're accepting walk-ins for anybody over the age of 12 and older. And as you know, earlier this week, the FDA and the CDC approved kids between the ages of 12 and 15 to get the COVID vaccine. We were prepared in advance. We knew this was potentially coming. So we updated all our website, our processes, our consent forms, and we're ready to go the second that was approved. And we've been taking care of those kids already. So if you'd like to bring your child in, feel free to do that. Now remember, whether you have a scheduled appointment or your walk-in, if you're over the age of 18, a photo ID is required. Anybody under the age of 18, that would be ideal but it's not required to have a photo ID. But for those folks under the age of 18, you need to have a legal guardian or a parent with you to sign the consent form. So we're happy to take care of you. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Now, a couple other notes about the vaccine clinics. One thing to remember is at the end of June, because of decreasing demand for the vaccine, we're actually gonna transition the Washington Crown Center back to the hospital and start doing that back in our conference center like we did early in the vaccine process. So if you came in for a vaccine here at the end of May, your second dose may be at the hospital and not at the Crown Center location. Another thing to note, we've been asked a number of times, if you were in a different location, for example, maybe you were down south for the winter and you got your first Pfizer vaccine down there and you're returning home, we can take care of your second vaccine here at our clinics. Again, you can walk in or schedule. We just require you to bring your photo ID and in that case, also bring your vaccine card when that shows when you got your first dose. Ideally, you'd come in for your second dose somewhere between your 21st and 42nd day after getting your first dose, but, if, but we can take care of that as well. And then once again, I want to highlight the fact based on the FDA and the CDC's approval this week, we can now vaccinate any kid between the ages of 12 and 15, and of course anybody older at any of our sites at any time, either on a walk-in or scheduled basis. Happy to take care of you. We think this is a great advancement for our society and for our community, and we're looking forward to taking care of those folks who want to take that opportunity to do so. Now, knowing this was potentially coming, we have two kids-focused vaccine clinics scheduled. One of them is going to be at the Peters Township Rec Center on May 19th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. The second one is going to be at the Crown Center Mall on Thursday, May 20th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now, even though those clinic times and dates are going to be kids-focused, if you're an adult and you want to come in during that time, maybe even coming with your child, great. But then kids can come at any time as well. And so even though we focus those two dates and times on kids, really anybody can come at any time. We just want to get you taken care of, get you protected, and get you safe. If you have any questions about whether or not your child should get the vaccine, I'd highly encourage you to have a conversation with either your child's pediatrician or the family medicine physician, the primary care doc who's taking care of your, your loved one. Look forward to taking care of you. We hope to see you soon there. Now let me move on to a few events coming up. Later today at 2 p.m., we're going to be hosting a live Facebook streaming event with the Hospital Association of Pennsylvania, some state and local government representatives to highlight an important legislation that's being considered called the HEROES Act for Public Health Preparedness, or otherwise known as the HEROES Act. This act proposes to take $650 million of the federal corona state local fiscal recovery funds that the state received and put it in a grant program that would be dedicated towards hospitals to take care of really three things. One, improving and streamlining the availability to people to get into healthcare workforce and healthcare jobs. Second one is to help with infrastructure needs, particularly around disaster preparedness. And the third issue is increasing access to care, specifically to mental health. That's what the act's being proposed. We're gonna be holding this live Facebook event, this press conference. I'm hoping you can join us to learn more about it and how this great program might help healthcare organizations in your community and the Washington Health System specifically. I look forward to seeing you there later today. Now I have a number of recognitions for you and bear with me, there's quite a few of this one. First and foremost, last week was National Nurses Week. 
Now, we didn't actually celebrate it last week because of conflict of schedules. We're celebrating it this week at the Washington Hospital. But I just want to take a moment to recognize nurses everywhere. And I think Washington Health System lead intensivist Jim Banish said it best when he said, it takes dedication, compassion, expertise, organization, and years of training to be honored with the title of nurse. And I think Jim's got it exactly correct. So I want to take this moment to thank and congratulate all the Washington Health System nurses and really nurses across the entire world for everything they do, not only during the pandemic, but for non-pandemic things. They're key members of our healthcare team. They help take care of our community and they help take care of us all in one way or another through the course of our life. Now this week, starting on May 17th, is National EMS Week, and we're gonna be holding events at our facilities to honor EMTs, paramedics, and other emergency medical response personnel to thank them for the critical role they play in our communities, and I wanted to acknowledge them today as well. May is also Mental Health Awareness Month. And tying back to the HEROES Act I talked about a little bit, part of the access to care there was about improving mental health. And so I think the timing of that act during May being Mental Health Awareness Month is important. In addition, in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month in May, Dr. Mary Jo Perduski, who's a longtime affiliate of Washington Health System, is launching her latest book in her NANI series. The title of this book is called NANI Talks About Mental Health. This is the 12th book in her NANI series. This book seeks to explore the importance of mental health through your entire life with healthy relationships with adults and parents and youth and exploring that for kids. You'll find this book and some of her other 36 books on Amazon, Amazon if you're interested. On top of that, May is also National Stroke Awareness Month, and I am proud of the fact that the Joint Commission has certified the Washington Hospital as a primary stroke center, which means we're the top performing stroke centers in the country. On top of that, the American Heart and American Stroke Association has honored the Washington Hospital for the 10th year in a row with their Gold Stroke Plus Award for stroke care, which again puts us in the top performing hospitals in the entire country. Very proud of that. So you know when you come here for stroke and cardiac care, you're getting the best possible care you can get anywhere. On top of that, we just learned recently that LeapFrog, which is a national organization that grades hospitals based on clinical, actual outcomes, and patient satisfaction scores, is just going to give us here in uh, spring of 2021 their grade A award for their hospital safety grade. This puts us in the top decile of all performing hospitals in the country. This is not the first time we've received their grade A, but I wanted to highlight it because I think with everything going on in the world with the pandemic, the fact that our staff our medical team and our team members across the organization could be laser focused on making sure that patients get the best care and a safe environment during a pandemic is amazing. And I just want to thank each and every one of those and recognize our team members for helping us achieve this wonderful distinction and having laser focus on patient safety. Now, I think you also probably heard in the last couple of weeks, the Pennsylvania governor, Tom Wolf, came to visit us as well. And I think in our 100 plus year history, this is the first time the governor's ever come to visit us. When they notified us they were gonna to come to our vaccine clinic, we asked them why. And they said it was really two reasons. One, they wanted to recognize the Washington Health System for our amazing work, not only during the pandemic, but during vaccination. Because of our work, Washington County was one of the highest performing compliant counties for getting vaccination rates across the entire Commonwealth. And on top of that, the Washington Health System had done over 50% of all those vaccines. And so it was a great honor to have him with us. On top of that, he wanted to promote the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine through a press conference. So regardless of your political views, I must say he was very gracious with us. He spent a lot of time. He talked to almost every patient that was within a radius, staff member, volunteer, all of our team. And I was personally proud and honored as he thanked our dedicated health care providers who were there that day. So I appreciate the governor's time. I appreciate his recognition. I think it was a great day for the Washington Health System. Moving on to my next topic, I'm happy to announce our cardiothoracic surgery program is now going to get a bump and we're going to be moving on to even bigger and better things. So we just recruited a Dr. David Haveron to join us. He showed up in April. We're happy to have him on board. He's going to be doing clinical work starting in May. He's going to be taking our program to the next level. I'm super excited about his expertise, his knowledge, and his leadership. I think as a community, he's going to be providing great service to us, taking our open heart surgery program to the next level. It's a wonderful advancement for our community and our, and our organization. I Hopefully, you will welcome him as well. Those are our updates for this particular month. I hope you found the information useful and helpful. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch. I hope to see you later this afternoon for our live Facebook event for the HEROES Act. 
Until then, or until our next video, which is going to be a month from now on June 4th, stay safe.